On February 24, 2011, WWE held a press conference in Mexico City to announce their newest signing, Sin Cara. And this signing was treated as a really big deal. Doing press conferences to announce a wrestler's signing was something that was unheard of from WWE at the time. So what made this signing such a big deal? Well, it's because prior to him signing to the WWE, Sin Cara was known as Mystico, and he was a huge star in Mexico and in Lucha Libre. So much so that a comic book series was made about him and his character that reached over 50 issues. And so, WWE just had to capitalize on a star this big in Mexico, however, if you know anything about Sin Cara and his run in the company, you'll know that it didn't meet expectations whatsoever. So let's talk about Sin Cara, formerly known as Mystico's failed run in the WWE. Sin Cara made his WWE debut on the April 4th, 2011 episode of Raw. Daniel Bryan, having just been defeated by Sheamus, was being beaten down when all of a sudden the lighting changed in the arena and Sin Cara made his entrance to make the save for Daniel Bryan. And boy, did he make his entrance with a bang by completely botching it. WWE had set up a trampoline at the bottom of the ramp that was out of the camera's view, and Sin Cara was gonna hit the trampoline and leap over the ropes in a stunning entrance, but he just hit the ropes on his way in, hit his head rolling into the ring. It looked awful, it looked dreadful, but it was hilarious. After this though, he would get the hang of doing his entrance, and it was a cool entrance, but by no means was this a good debut of any sort, or a good start for Sin Cara in the WWE. He then appeared on that week's SmackDown during the entrance again to attack Jack Swagger. They sort of just redid his debut, and then on the next Raw episode, he was drafted to SmackDown. Sin Cara made his in-ring debut on the April 29th episode of SmackDown facing Jack Swagger and the entirety of the match would see the arena's lights changed to match the colours of Sin Cara's mask and this would be common for Sin Cara matches in the future. And once again, this was just uncharted territory for the WWE. WWE had never had a wrestler who had came in and had their own themed lighting for every match they take part in. He picks the win up over Swagger by roll-up, but in the next few matches he would establish the Spanish Fly as being his main finisher. He would then enter into a feud with Chavo Guerrero, being unpleased that Chavo was interfering in his matches, leading to Sin Cara's pay-per-view debut at Over the Limit, where he defeated Chavo Guerrero. He would then get to wrestle on pay-per-view again when he competed in the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank ladder match at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, where he was powerbombed through a ladder by Sheamus in an awesome spot and taken out on a stretcher with a storyline injury. And the reason why Sin Cara was given a storyline injury was revealed the next day when it was announced that he had been suspended for 30 days for violating WWE wellness policy. Safe to say it had been a less than stellar start with a suspension, botch debut, and if you didn't already know, botches just scattered everywhere because if you didn't know once again, Sin Cara botched in damn near every match he was in. It kind of became what he was known for in the WWE, botching. However, while Sin Cara was suspended, it was the man portraying it who was suspended and not the character. So WWE decided to keep the character on TV and decided to have developmental wrestler Jorge Arriaga portraying the Sin Cara character whilst Mystico was suspended and he would have a match with Heath Slater on SmackDown which was apparently so so bad and so full of botches that it had to be retaped. But Mystico would return from suspension and would come back at a live event on the 20th of August, but then just six days later he was sent home from the SmackDown tapings for unknown reasons after meeting with company officials, and Ariaga would continue to portray the Sin Cara character, with talks of him becoming the permanent Sin Cara character and Mystico possibly departing the company. What? But while all that was happening and whilst Mystico was spending some time away from the WWE, Sin Cara, who was being portrayed by Ariaga once again, would turn heel for the first time and this would lead to a very interesting angle. Because on the September 16th episode of SmackDown, Mystico would return as Sin Cara to confront Sin Cara. And we all remember this storyline. 
WWE were playing into the fact that there was two people playing Sin Cara, and the storyline was that everything we had seen recently, like the heel turn, had been from the imposter Sin Cara. This led to a match between the two Sin Caras at Hell in a Cell, with the imposter Sin Cara changing to a black, darker mask, and at the pay per view, Sin Cara would defeat his imposter and then defeated him again in a mask versus mask match on SmackDown weeks later, with the imposter unmasking and revealing himself as. As Hunico. And Sin Cara and Hunico would continue their feud with them being on opposite teams in a Survivor Series match that Sin Cara had to exit early after he got legit injured, rupturing his tendor, and this would mean he had to get surgery and was out of action for six months. Another big blow for Sin Cara. He would return on the June 1st, 2012 episode of SmackDown, and no, nobody wore the mask in his absence. He defeated Heath Slater, and then less than a month later, would defeat him again to qualify for the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank ladder match once again, which was won by Dolph Ziggler. And at this point, Sin Cara was just kind of another guy on the roster. His hype had died, and he didn't even have his special lighting anymore. However, he was still getting regular TV time and even getting some pay-per-view matches. In August, he would align himself with Rey Mysterio and also challenge for the Intercontinental title at Night of Champions in a four-way match for his first pay-per-view title match, but was unsuccessful. Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio would enter a tag team title number one contenders tournament and would make it to the final to face Team Road Scholars on Raw, but lost. Rey and Sin Cara would then team with Justin Gabriel, Tyson Kidd, and Brodus Clay at Survivor Series to defeat the primetime players Epico, Primo, and Tensai in what you can probably tell is just a match full of jobbers and Rey Mysterio. He would get another pay-per-view match when him and Rey would face Team Road Scholars again in a tables match at TLC to earn a shot at the tag titles, but Sin Cara was put through a table and they lost. And then two days later, Sin Cara was written off TV after being attacked by The Shield as he had suffered a knee injury. He returned at the Royal Rumble in 2013 in the Royal Rumble match itself at number 29, but this return run ended up being uneventful and he just spent 2013 trailing. He was no longer teaming with Rey Mysterio and he had largely been relegated to live events, superstars and main event, and he would only sporadically appear on Raw and SmackDown, usually to lose or get squashed. He would wrestle Alberto Del Rio on the August 19th, 2013 episode of Raw in a match where he early on dislocated his finger and refused to continue the match, getting it thrown out. Something that caught him a lot of heat backstage, and this would end up being Mystico's final TV appearance as Sin Cara, as in January 2014, he announced that he was returning to Mexico soon, and he was officially released from the WWE in March of that year. However, whilst Mystico had been released, WWE still had the rights to the Sin Cara character, and they would get Hunico, yes, the fake Sin Cara from before, to play Sin Cara once again. But that's a story for another video. Overall, Mr. Ko's WWE run was a bit of a disaster, but I thought there were some good spots. He was fun in the Money in the Bank matches, even if he did botch. His lighting and his entrance was cool when once again he wasn't botching it, and I thought his feud with fake Sin Cara was good fun and something different. I definitely enjoyed it as a kid. I think overall Sin Cara's style didn't mesh well with the WWE presentation, which is why he was not as smooth in the ring, but it's also been well known that Mr. Ko caught a lot of heat backstage and had a bit of an attitude problem while in the company, so that could well have easily played a part into why the WWE lost interest in him so quickly, but we will definitely be revisiting in a part 2 to look at the second version, the second generation of Sin Cara. So leave a like and a subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. Bye!